Thank you, Matthew. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Greenfield Lutheran. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm a, a deacon here, which is kind of like a, a pastor's helper here at uh, Christ Greenfield. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Tim Allman will be coming by later uh, in this worship service to, to give the, the sermon message. But I'm going to get us started off with some uh, announcements. And the first is, is for our, our visitors uh, if, if you would like more information about this church, please see our, our welcome kiosk out in the courtyard, and they'll be happy, happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, you should have received a... Um, I'm getting tied up here. You should have received a, uh, 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 a Connect card as you came in, and that records your attendance uh, you, you can leave that in the offering plate at that point in the service when we collect offerings, or you can also record your uh, attendance online at our uh, CG app. I have some announcements for you, and the first is a, a launch of CG Cares classes, and this week marks uh, the launch of a bunch of different classes and, and, and groups. We offer a variety of options to uh, support you in, in different areas of your life. For example, uh, a marriage class, a grief share class, a parenting class, a Christians in politics class, cancer companions class, and how to Navigate Difficult Conversations class. If any of these topics or, or, or more than one of these topics interest you, uh, please visit our website, uh, christgreenfield.church slash cgcares to learn more about each group, uh, the meeting times and, and registration details. Uh, please take advantage of this opportunity. Second announcement is VBS registration. Vacation Bible School is, is really big here at Christ Greenfield, and registration is now open. This summer, your children will dive below the surface in a undersea world uh, to experience God's ever-flowing, never-ending love. Uh, each day of this undersea adventure will focus on a different theme, allowing your children to explore the depths of their friendship with God. Uh, registration is open now. Visit our, our Christ Greenfield app or ChristGreenfield.church/vbs for more information. And the third announcement is uh, for the women. We're calling all the women of Christ Greenfield to join us uh, for a day of worship, great sermons, and fellowship with women in our community on wh what is called the, the IF Tour. And apparently the IF Tour is a, a, a nationwide uh, event. And uh, the, the theme of this is If God is Real... And then we want to remember who Jesus is and why we love him. We want to remember his character, power, love, and his delight for us. Uh, Jesus fills our longings, heals our wounds, saves us from ourselves, and gives us hope when everything else fails us. Tickets are $25 per person. It includes lunch. Uh, get your uh, tickets uh, by again visiting a website, christgreenfield.church slash women, or, or, or see the um, welcome kiosk uh, for more details. This concludes our announcements. Let's, let's begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, two weeks following our celebration of Easter, we are still basking in the glow of your resurrection we thank you, Lord, that you have come to this world to redeem us from our sins and then rise again from the dead, giving us a promise of everlasting life with you. 
We rejoice in that hope, dear Lord, and we pray that this worship this morning might give you glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please rise and, and we'll sing. In our worship service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We silently reflect upon our sinful condition. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what, what we, we have, have done, done and by, by what, what we, we have, have left, left undone. We have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have we not have loved not our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
in the mercy of Almighty God. Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, mighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, Christ Greenfield. I'm Rachel Bredo, the Next Gen Director at Christ Greenfield. Our Game Changer Gala is less than a week away. I can't believe it. Our galas are an annual fundraising event that bring together community members to support its worthy cause. There has been so much excitement and expectation for all the beautiful gifts that the Gilbert Campus Gym will bring to our community. So this year's gala is another opportunity to praise God, celebrate those gifts, and raise money for the essential equipment that our gym still needs. It's gonna be an unforgettable night. We will have heavy appetizers, drinks, desserts to match the sports themes. You can begin participating right now. The auction is already open if you want to begin bidding or looking at the items available. You guys, we have iPads, we have Jeep tours, we have foursomes, we have bikes. There are so many great gifts. We also have lots of teacher experiences where you can bid on going out with your teacher um, to an event together. So much fun. Classroom art projects, so many great things. It's also not too late to purchase tickets and register for the live event. Simply visit ChristGreenfield.Church gala for all the information. And we will see you on April 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Gilbert Campus Gym. Thank you for your generosity towards the ministry of Christ Greenfield Lutheran Church. Your uh, offerings to us 
in, in terms of uh, giving here in person in church or giving online or giving to this church in terms of acts of service. All of those offerings are saying that Jesus is enough in your life and we thank you for your generosity. For this morning's choir anthem, we invite you to join us in singing on the refrain. We will sing through the refrain twice at the beginning to help you get familiar with it. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior.
Thank you, choir. You have some extra voices this morning. Please uh, join with me in prayer. Good morning, Lord. Lord, Jesus is enough in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that no matter the circumstances of our lives, no matter why we may be having trouble in this world, that you are with us. Jesus is enough. He alone is our salvation. And we pray that you would use these offerings and use our very lives to share that good news with the world around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may be bold in answering the call to loudly proclaim that Jesus is enough, that God exalted him to be our leader and savior. He provides forgiveness of sins, and he alone is our rock in our salvation. Help us to find our joy in you, Lord, being willing to suffer for the name of Jesus, obeying God rather than men, and finding our reward in heaven rather than in this world. Lord, in your mercy. And almighty God, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. From today's scripture readings, we celebrate your outpouring of the Holy Spirit on a group of apostles in Jerusalem who endured beatings and cruelty for the cause of the gospel. In baptism, you also pour out your Holy Spirit on us and call us to be your witnesses we pray that likewise we may be courageous and fearless in sharing the good news about Jesus with those around us. Lord, put a hedge of protection around missionaries throughout the world who face danger and persecution. Guard them with your holy angels and keep evil away from them. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord of the nations, we pray to you, for peace in this world. What this world really needs is Jesus, and we pray that hearts would be turned to him and away from warfare, especially in the Middle East where nations clash and where children are taught to hate rather than to love. And in this nation, we pray for peace rather than murders and, and stealing and violence in our streets. We especially pray that the love of Christ will be made known in all places with eternity in the forethought of all people rather than temporary things of this world. Lord, in your mercy. And God of love, inspire us to care for the needy, not just in words, but also by actions, by the Holy Spirit that dwells within us Fill us with a desire to love the mentally ill, to call on those who are troubled, to care for the sick and the lonely, to pray without ceasing, and to share with everyone the victory of Jesus Christ. In all of our interactions, give us humble hearts that confess our mutual brokenness rather than exalting ourselves. Lord, in your perfect compassion, 
We especially pray today for the family of Betty Waltersdorf, sister-in-law of Ken and Sharon Waltersdorf. Betty went to be with Jesus on Friday. We know that in Christ, her passing is not an ending, but rather a blessing of eternal life in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. And if you are able, please rise as we lift up this beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we now recite the words of the Nicene Creed, a summary of our Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and we sing.
We turn now to God's word. And our first reading is from Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. To the choir master with stringed instruments. Our second reading, this is the word of the Lord. And our second reading is uh, Acts chapter 5. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, And you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, So, in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. And please rise. Hallelujah, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Jesus speaks. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. He is the Christ. Amen. You just sang that song because I went long over there. So buckle up. <laughs> Jesus is here, man. This is going to be so much, so much fun. If we've not met, if it's your first or second, third time here, man, we'd love to connect with you after worship today. My name is Tim, one of the pastors here. We are in week two in our Easter sermon series on uh, the resurrection reality fueling the mission of the early church connected to the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Apostles. More than that, it's the act of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit being released from the temple to house to house. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of the risen Christ could not and would not be contained, it had to go forth. And you see the apostles starting to live the way of Jesus, the way of the cross. They're proclaiming the word of God, Peter in Acts chapter two. They're healing the man born lame from, from birth. And then today, they're experiencing the cross, the suffering, the rage of those who rage against them because they're connected to Jesus, the crucified and risen one. Jesus is more than enough. Jesus is enough. How many firstborn perfectionists here this morning? Here? No, no, I'm the only firstborn perfectionist in this place. Come on, we gotta own it. We own it. Um, I am a recovering perfectionist slash catastrophist. <laughs> catastrophist. And it sounded like this when I was 10 or 11. I absolutely despised being late anywhere. Any people like really get anxious if you're late and I would lose my mind if my mom was a little bit late to get to practice or something like that and I would catastrophize it sound like this, mom, get in the car, mom. You're gonna make me late, mom. If I'm late, I'm not gonna play in the game. If I'm not playing in the game, my whole life is gonna be ruined, mom. What's my, get in the car, mom, to which my mom would say, chill out, dude, like for real. We're gonna get there, it's, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be okay, mom. Everything is falling apart. To which she'd go down that line of logic. She'd be like, oh, what's the worst thing that can happen? This moment is the worst thing that can happen to me, mom. And I was, I was a tough, I was a tough kid. And she would say, no, the worst thing would be the love of God leaving you. Jesus departing from you. Come on, mom, okay, fine. That is, that is the worst thing. And she'd say, you'll never leave or forsake you. You're gonna be oh, okay. I know that, mom, let's get to the game. Let's get to the practice, whatever. I'm a recovering catastrophist. Uh, and the catastrophist in me even extends, you think, you know, pastors are not people sometimes. We're, like our minds go down really dark, paths connected to what could happen. And one of those paths that my mind went down a couple years ago was connected to that amazing gym, multi-purpose space that many of you helped give. And two years ago when Pastor Jake was not here, you remember that nine month period or so when Pastor Jake wasn't here? And I was, it was tough. It was tough. And Satan would tell me, that gym's never gonna get built, man. He sounds a lot more like my voice, by the way, you know? That gym's never gonna get built, and if that doesn't get built, you're an awful pastor. Um, you, you, CG could actually end up moving on from you. Uh, you're, you're the worst, you're the worst. And I came into a town hall meeting and had that mentality. Some of you, if some of you were at the town hall when we voted on moving forward or not with the, with the gym, um, you were there and you saw Jesus at work. And here's what Jesus basically told me. Get off the throne, Tim. Who's the center point? This conversation in your head, it's all about you. Whose church is this? Whose mission is this? Whose gym will this be? It will be mine. And the Holy Spirit showed up and showed off that day as we unanimously voted we must build a gym to, to care for our kids and help our school continue to grow. Praise be to God, but I don't know if I'm among friends here as I talk about the mind and the satan it is satanic, demonic, spiritual warfare that takes place in the mind as we catastrophize our life. And what happens? It steals joy. <laughs> How many of us start as a young kid and you're like, you know what, I can't wait to grow up and be grumpy. 
It's gonna be amazing when I grow up and I'm a grumpy, I'm, a, I'm angry at the world and stuff. I can't wait, it's gonna be amazing. No one starts out like that. But a lot of people, apart from the love of God, that's where they go, why? Because a catastrophe inevitably comes. And is it gonna be, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, try harder, do it, do it, figure it out? It doesn't work! Because something else comes, and something else comes, and something else comes. Jesus is enough, why? Because joy is not conditional on, I feel good, I'm, oh, vacation, I gotta look at my bank account, all these types of things. All of it goes away. Jesus meets you in and through the struggle. What did Jesus tell his disciples? In this world you will have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. I came to give you life, John 10, 10. I came to give you life, and life is just kind of mediocre, grumpy. It's kind of an awful, awful existence. No, I came to give you life, and life to the full. Following Jesus gives purpose and meaning through the suffering, through the trial, not around it. He's carrying us through it. You're with him. You're enveloped in Christ. And the book of Acts gives us this picture of the early church They're walking the way of Jesus. They're living it out in short order. I mean, a lot of them, they they must have thought, yeah, Jesus told us suffering and all this kind of stuff is gonna come, but I didn't think it'd be this quick, (laughs) you know? It's almost immediately after the Holy Spirit comes, they start bringing signs and wonders, and then everything from a human perspective, it looks like it's falling falling apart. And there are men in power. (laughs) Uh, The Sadducees, and the Pharisees, so let me, um, let me, these are the guys who were in collusion to kill Christ, right? To hand him over to the Romans. And the difference between the Pharisees is the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead on the last day, and the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, and that's so sad, you see, okay? So that's the difference between these two groups, and they're in collusion with one another to take out anyone who preaches the gospel, preaches in the name, you're gonna see they don't even say his name. In the name, get rid of, get rid of these guys. So what do they do? They put them in prison. That often happens. Silence them, we'll put them in prison. All 12 of them, Matthias has been chosen at this time. The picture we get is all 12 of them being put in prison, and one night, what happens? An angel comes, and they break out. They, there's a breakout. But the guards, no one else knows, and then guess where they immediately go? Back to the temple, and they start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now what do you think the Pharisees and the Sadducees say? They actually get together that very morning, and this is earlier in in Acts, and they start to say, what are we gonna do with these guys? We should beat them, good point, good point. Beat them severely, better point. Probably put them to death, excellent, excellent point. We're gonna stop this thing right now. And in comes, it's kind of a humorous story, in comes someone who says, oh, we went to the prison, they're not there, they're trying to cover their backside a little bit, it was locked, I don't know what happened. And then they start to say, hmm, that's very interesting. And then another guy comes in and says, we just saw them at the temple, they're at the temple, they're, they're continuing to talk about Jesus. And so the guys are, oh, well, what are we gonna do? Guards, go get them. And so the guards go back to the temple, and uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting. It says, they come and they invite them. They said, like, uh, fellas, you can talk, like in a space like this, could you uh, come with me, please? Oh, why? Just please come now, sir. Uh, the, the, boss, the boss man wants you, so please just come. Why do they want to not arrest them by force? It says they don't take them by force. Why? Because the, the crowd is turning at this point, and they want to protect their own Next, the crowd going against, against them. Public opinion is starting to shift based on the Holy Spirit at work. And so the apostles could have said, nah, <laughs> I don't wanna go, I'm good here, thank you, thank you very much. But they actually head right back in to the hornet's nest, and here it picks up again in verse 27, Acts chapter, Acts chapter five. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council And the high priest questioned them, saying, we strictly charged you not to teach in this name. They won't even say his name, isn't that kind of funny? Say his name, bro, his name's Jesus. Not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. (laughs) One, One fact, one point of irony. The fact, you have filled Jerusalem 
with this man's teaching? Not a complete sentence. The Holy Spirit had filled Jerusalem with this man's teaching. You have to think the apostles like, uh, do you know that like 3,000 came to faith? So you, you, wanna, you wanna take us out? There's like a whole bunch of people who are around here. The, the cat's out of the bag, if you will. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. So you can kinda come, you fill this land with the teaching, the Holy Spirit was unleashed. Let's pause right there. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to be unleashed in a powerful way from Christ Greenfield, connected to every other church that professes Jesus as Lord, from the valley out to the United States of America and beyond. We need a revival in this day and age in our country, man. People are going along with anger and anxiety, despair, mental health issues are on the rise. We need to talk about Jesus more, remind one another to remember the promises of God. He died, he rose, you don't need to be afraid of death. You don't have to catastrophize what's going on in this world. We need the Holy Spirit. I just came out, if you sense a little bit of extra Jesus juice this morning, I was at a, a spiritual retreat at a church that shall not be named because then you'd start to judge their theology, right? It was amazing. It was a Bible-believing church that boldly professed the cross of Christ, and they have a strong, strong prayer ministry. So I went there with my daughter, and it was Spectacular. And the Holy Spirit, <laughs> uh, God is so kind. God cares for his people, and he wants to remind us the laying on of hands is a thing that you see all the time in the book of Acts. The laying on of hands are powerful when a believer prays for another believer in, in faith. And so there was prayer time, and one of the last prayer experiences I had, I was right next to this younger guy, his name is Shane, and Shane and I got to talk in, and and I was like, Shane, how long you been connected to, to the church and following Jesus, all that kind of stuff? And, and Shane goes, oh, last October. I was like, uh, like 20 years ago, October? He's like, no, like last fall. I was an atheist. And I was going down this really angry path. It just wasn't working for me in my business. And then I came to know Jesus, and I have the joy of Christ. He prayed over me in the Holy Spirit. It was powerful, church. This dude just came to faith six months ago, for goodness sake. Like there can be, and I think especially in the younger generation, this heightened spiritual reality. There are dark forces that are around in our world that wanna steal, kill, and destroy, and divide us from the promises of God. Take away, snatch our joy. It's not, the world can't take what the world gave. The world doesn't have right to your joy. Jesus is joy. Like, don't look for the world to give what the world can never give. It's not about money, power, or might, man. It's about Jesus. It's about serving, sacrificing, finding meaning and purpose and giving your life away. That is the way of Jesus. He's more than enough. I have no idea where I am in the sermon. Okay, but Peter, <laughs> verse 29. But Peter, oh, I, uh, before this, the, the irony, you intend to bring this man's blood, right, upon us. Fellas, you want his blood upon you. The reality is, you were in collusion, handing him over, she has Pilate's fault, we are, we're, we're gonna wash our hands of it. Pilate also wanna wash his hands of the blood. All of us have dirty, blood-stained hands. We have all hung Christ to the cross, and now the flip of it all is Jesus is the Lamb of God whose blood covers us of all sin. We wanna be covered in the blood of Jesus. Oh, the irony. Fellas, you need the blood of Jesus. Verse 29. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are, martyreo, witnesses to these things. And so is, there he is, the Holy Spirit, whom, you, whom God has given to those who obey him, I love this, the courage of the apostles in the face of potentially imminent death. We must, we're compelled to obey. Now some uh, Lutherans here, you've been raised up and uh, you have a Lutheran mind and you're like, obey? That sounds legalistic. That sounds like you gotta do something to earn your faith. No, 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 a synonym for obey here is trust and faith. We must have trust in, faith in God. Believe his word. Confess what we have seen with our own eyes. We must obey God. 
rather than men. Good thing we have no opportunity in this day and age to take these words to heart. <laughs> Hello, facetious, side note. Little, there's numerous opportunities. We must obey. I'm not gonna go down the COVID pathway right now, but I'll tell you this. They'll never shut down the local church again. We will always gather to proclaim Jesus. We must obey God rather than men. We must have faith and trust that he will take care of us. That kind of courage must be proclaimed by the church. How do you think the men in power respond to this? They're like, oh, that's a great story. Tell me more. <laughs> no, check it out. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill him. <laughs> when the gospel of Jesus Christ comes to you, you really only have one of three responses. One is rage. No, no, my way. I'm on the throne. Take down anybody else who does not comply. I'm a big deal. Power, when power is assaulted, is followed by, by rage. It's often illogical, by the way. It's all emotional. Rage or run, run away, figure it out on my own. Or a better choice, repent, repent. Turn around, the Holy Spirit will meet you there. Set your mind above where Christ is. And then Gamaliel speaks. But a Pharisee of the council, it's interesting, here we see the Sadducees and the Pharisees interacting. Pharisee of the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. <laughs> Let's calm down here, guys. Everything, everything's gonna be okay. Let's think, let's get rational. And then guess what he says? He tells them then a story about some other lords or messiahs that had shown up and tried to start a revival movement, but they were killed, and then all of their disciples were scattered. Do you remember that, guys? And then he says this, we're gonna skip over to verse 38. So in the present case with Jesus, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. Hmm. Good advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat, huh? They beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them, let them go. Um, and a lot of times, in my mind, you've got this, this beating. And what do you think? Fellas, have you ever been beat down? I've never been beat down, but I've seen, I've seen a movie or two, and I'm thinking about a beat down, like bam, just like right in the face. They're like, <laughs> sorry if my mind gets a little, they're like in a line of 12 dudes. Thank you, sir, may I have another? Thank you, sir, may I have another? It's just like boom. That's not even close to what happened. The Greek word for beating should be translated flogging and being, being whipped. And many times this whipping, sound familiar? Uh, leads them to lose so much blood or infection to set in that they soon lose, lose their lives. You think you've had a no good, very bad, awful day? Like this is a bad day for these guys. Holy Spirit speaking to me, like, you think you got problems because you can't raise money to build a gym? <laughs> Give me a break, man. This is a rough, this is a rough day. How would you respond if this happened? Check it out. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing, huh? Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah. I have this image of these guys like, arms around one another, look at each other like, that, that really hurt. But I'm really grateful and honored that I've been counted worthy. Jesus told us this would happen and it's happening right now. Are we, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing this. Better yet, he's doing this. The Holy Spirit 
is doing this. And they could not quench the Spirit of God, put out the fire of the Holy Spirit from temple to house to house. I pray the same thing happens today in this kind of temple gathering space from house to house and small groups and prayer and care for one another, out into your workplaces, out into the world, that the world would know there is a king, his name is Jesus, and he is Lord over everything, and no matter what happens in the future, his mission, his reign will not be stopped. And the fuel of this mission is joy. Joy is the center part of the brain. Joy is the gasoline for a brain and a life that's filled with meaning and purpose. We need more joy. Uh, Three quick points. Joy is not dependent on circumstances. If this happens, if my life goes practically perfect in every way, then I'll have joy. No, 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 no. Or if I have enough money in the bank, then I have joy. That's not the way of Jesus. Joy is not dependent upon you knowing the why of suffering, which inevitably comes. Why did this happen? I had... In your specific case, I don't know. Uh, But I know you have a God who cares for you and sits with you and weeps with you and carries you, speaks to you, comforts you in the midst of inevitable suffering. That's the Holy Spirit's power within you. And I also know this, joy is Jesus with you. Joy is Jesus with you. Do you you remember, there's some moms and dads here, uh, the book, Or you say, I love you to the moon and back. Do you remember that book? I love you to the moon and back. I tried to read it to my three teenagers recently. It didn't go over so well. It was a little weird, you know what I'm saying? But I remember remember you used to saying, I love you this much. I love you this much. I love you. I love you this much. Do you know what the cross is? It's Jesus saying, I love you this much. And I'm with you. Do not despair. Joy is Jesus with you in anticipation of the day when our faith is made, made sight. When catastrophes will be gone forever, rage, anger will be gone forever, and all we will know is the presence and joy of Jesus. Until then, know Jesus. He's more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to rise. What a joy to be in worship with you today. I pray the Holy Spirit infuses your life with joy and the presence of God as you go with this blessing. If you're comfortable, uh, you can put your hands out like this, like a little kid. We should have faith like children, right? Crawling up into the arms of our daddy as he carries us into our week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. I know my Redeemer lives. Let's sing it out.